closed by the Trayvon's RV Center. Here to congratulate you on your 2024 J Flight 324 BDS travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, leave plenty of room for that awning to come out. On your off campsite, besides your slides, also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power and water are both going to plug in in between the slides, so just above your rear tire on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. So park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook our hitch, first thing we're going to do is level our unit. And it comes with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Simply extend or retract to get this up and down. Now your unit door is close to the middle but get a level on there get this up and down get a level should you lose power under this rubber stopper right here your hand crank for your stabilizing jacks will get this up and down manually speaking of power check your battery post every now and then make sure nothing's wiggled loose going down the road once we got our unit level next thing we're going to do is stabilize it let me tell you something about this override um, stopper so get your fingers black so don't use that unless you have to. On all four corners of your unit, got these st scissor stabilizing jacks. Now the way these new ones are, we're going to unhook this safety lash from right here. We only have to crank this down to the right one or two times just to get in here to this latch. Lift up on it and push this right to the ground. Just that quickly you got these down. You can twist a couple more times to lock it down there i am going to recommend stabilizing jack pads jack pads will protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt debris and hot black top in the summer use your 10 percent off coupon get a four pack of those put them down run all four of those down once we got our unit level and stable we can hook up our power and water again your slides would be in at this point i'm going to come back here big long 50 amp cord plugs in here on the side Twist that on there. Now convenience pack will have a 50 to 30 dog bone as well as a 30 to 15 amp in case you uh, need to plug into a 110. Get your power hooked up, Let's hook up your water. At campsites, we're gonna hook up to a city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines of the unit. I always use these because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up to city water. One more step, open up your hot water heater. Just make sure that your pressure release valve is down. Otherwise, water will just start pouring out of there. Then we go ahead and turn that hose on. Have that hose. We're gonna open up our slides so that we can get inside and open up all of our sinks and showers, all of our water. Get a nice steady flow of water going through them. Then you can shut them off and you're all set to camp. Now let's say we're gonna go dry camping boondocking maybe like to call it in that case we're going to fill up our fresh water tank over here on the campsite no need for a water pressure regulator here you can simply gravity fill this with a hose two ways to tell it's full one there's an overflow valve right here or two on the inside where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks there's also a fresh water button keep an eye on that when you're filling it up once it's full put that cap back on and then whenever you want to utilize that water you'll turn on your water pump indoors don't turn on your water pump and hook to city water that is already pressurized all right we're all set to camp with power and water let me walk you around the rest of the unit i'll continue up here in the front your propane does have a cover it comes with a regulator simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using lefty lucy to open i like to use one tank at a time that way i know how much i've got left coming up early here again is our batteries big pass through storage area Here's a griddle, a J-port arm, and table. I'll show you where those hook up. Mentioned on your slides, you do have these side seals. They have a lubricant that you can buy to spray on these a couple times a year, keep them from dry rotting, keep them nice and flexible and pliable over the years. That's really important on your slides, and you got a couple of them here. Um, we do have an extra gray tank full up underneath there. We'll talk about that when slides are closed when we're leaving. 
Down here is where we'll dump our black tank. And up here is our black tank flush. We'll talk about that again when we're leaving. Hot water heater. Hot and cold shower out here. City water connect. That's a flu for your furnace. A couple things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear that it does get hot. And third, they make bug guards you can get over those. We got them in our store. Come around the rear of the unit. Here's where you plug in cable at the campsites or a satellite you put up. Got a ladder, utilize it. Go up there two, three times a year. Check the seams in your roof of caulk as needed with recommended roofing caulk. You're prepped for a backup camera device you can purchase that sets out of a dash your tow vehicle. You add another little piece onto this that gives you a backup camera for the unit. Back here you got a spray port. That same uh, hot cold shower hose can hook up here. Here is where your, your uh, J-port arm will slide in. Table sets on top of that here. And right in there is your quick connect LP. So I want to set that in there to show you that have your table set in this way. Um, otherwise your door here won't close So that's how your J-port table sets up griddle sets right on top of that There's a quick connect hose for that you Outdoor kitchen area Fridge there's our hose for our spray port and shower areas Got extra steps to go into our bedroom here awning does have a pitch adjust Light rain, pitch that down, never run all your rainwater away this way or the other way, wherever you're camping, set your camp at. However, these are made for shade. Recommend to bring in in any rain, especially high rains or high winds. A couple outdoor speakers, a vent for your cooktop inside. This is a mount for a TV. Mount your TV on that, you can quickly snap that off and take that indoors and put another puck maybe like that indoors. Cable 110 for that TV here. Again, our fresh water, which means fresh water drain, big white one here. Then our low point drains right here. Dump those when leaving the campsite. So in front of here, we've got our big pass-through storage area with your hitch work. And that about covers everything out here. So take a look on the inside. Coming up side unit, first thing I always like to point out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone is camping once you notice the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway as soon as you come in. Up top here, we've got, oop, that was our interior lights and exterior on lights. Over here is where you check your battery. Fresh water, that's the one I said to hold down when filling up your fresh water tank. Black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on for a pump, your water pump, to get to that fresh water. On your awning. You don't want to run that awning out until you can see that bar and your flap has fall down to 90 degrees. If I were to continue to run that out, it will run up onto itself, flip itself up backwards, and start running itself in backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Don't run it out further than you need to. I run that in. We've also got a slide control here. Down here is our 12 volt carbon dioxide propane detector. The reason I mentioned that's 12 volt, that's always running off your battery. So if you are out dry camping somewhere, uh, nothing plugged in charging your batteries, then disconnect battery post to keep this from running your battery down. With our on in, I'll tell you that these slam locks work best when gently slammed. Couple one tens and charging ports. Let's talk plumbing. Access to your plumbing is underneath here. Uh, just keep an eye on it. You, if you travel a lot and bounce this up and down the road a lot, um, things may wiggle loose. Just keep an eye on them make sure that nothing has. Up here we've got our self-explanatory microwave. Down here we got a light and fan. This glass top. Makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light. Turn this to... Your flame, hit your spark, that's how all these light up. Same thing on your oven. So you'll go to your flame, hit your spark over here, that usually lights your, or that'll light up your pilot light. And you can usually look in here and see the reflection of the pilot light. If not, just turn that on, you can get up over there and look. Our fridge, again, 
make sure you have uh if you have nothing in here make sure you get in here and have that at the off position and the hallway here access to the back of your shower for more plumbing turn on our ac actually crank up rather quickly as it does i'll show you we have a quick dump when you arrive at a campsite it's smoking hot in here come and open that up and that'll start cooling the cool air so that when you do close that it's going to blast cold air into the rest of the unit so generally on acs i'll tell you i just hit off generally ac shut off rather quick i'll tell you there's only three settings here we've got fan we've got ac and we've got our furnace When it shuts off here, now I'm going to go in and turn on my furnace. Find my return for that. Oh, there it is in the hallway. All right, now when I shut off that, you'll notice that it will take a few minutes to cycle through before that fan shuts off. Slide control for our bunk room. One touch lighting over here. Same above our seating. These are removable. They just set in your cup holder. These are parachute pull recliners, I call them. Pull on the parachute pull and that reclines it. Put it back down with your feet. Back over to our dinette. So I mentioned your table will lift right up off those bars. Put your table on this rubber stoppers here. Put your flat cushions on top, hold other sleeping quarters. In the hallway, prep for a TV, you got a backer here. There's a the cable for that. Just make sure that there's a little green button in here. Make sure that button is on, that green light comes on, that's your antenna. Great Lakes Tunnel. Indoor. And outdoor. Speakers. 20. Um, nice little sound system. AM, FM, Bluetooth. AM, FM, Bluetooth. Back to our bedroom, emergency exit window. You can lift up on this, push that out, yank your screen out of there. That's your emergency exit. Solar controller. Again, the only thing you need to be concerned with. Just make sure that it stays on flooded battery and i'll send you a video from go power real easy to make sure that you're on flooded whole purpose of this is to make sure that it doesn't overcharge your battery make sure that you're on the correct battery back here in here for a tv in the bedroom and some storage up underneath the bed one touch lighting in here on um, these doors for the bedroom you want to make sure that when we're leaving and traveling them are snapped open. Don't want them bouncing around. Back down in here to our bathroom. A couple things in here. We've got a hand crank open. Power exhaust vent. 110 with GFCI reset. More plumbing to maintain. Just keep an eye on it. It's mostly all PEX nowadays. Another excess panel. Get it in there, check things out. Oh, here's where you turn on your hot water heater. Um, I'll send you a video from uh, Suburban on how to run those. Real easy, that's what you turn it on at. Hot water on demand. So back in here at our bunk rooms. Uh, the biggest thing I want to mention is your upper bunk over here. Real quick, we can mention this table again, like out there. Legs will come out, table sit down, another area to sleep. It's this upper bunk. You want to travel with this in the lower position. I trust the bar on each side a lot more than I do this on a big bunk. So again, travel with that down. Now the door to snap open. And that about covers everything in here. Um, we are prepped for another TV back here as well. 
So let's act like we're leaving the campsite and close the unit up. I'm going to start back here real quick. Just shut off these individual lights that I know I turned on by hand. Every, all of the ones back here in this bunk room are... Check my vent, shut off my lights in here, lock my door. Now I like to come to my control panel and shut off my interior lights. Then I know all the other lights that are on are individual lights that I need to shut off. So then when I'm leaving the unit, I can shut off my main lights straight from there at the control panel. So we've walked through the unit, made sure that we've put away everything that can bounce around and break things. Now come back to your control panel, turn my interior lights on and say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's gonna impede our slides from coming in. Come on back here to our bunk area and hit slide in. Again, making sure those doors back there are closed. The TV's tucked away if you have anything up there. The top bunk is in the lower position. And bedroom door is snapped open. Why don't you hear that noise? That is just the slide mechanism saying, I'm in all the way, let go. All right, come in here, slide in. Again, see the importance of having these doors closed. We don't need to be breaking doors just because we're bringing our slides in. One more noise. Shut off our light next to the unit. The biggest thing on these steps is you want to make sure your exterior door is all the way open. Bringing them up or down, otherwise this will catch on it. Feet are also adjustable. Pull on these counter pins. Pretty easy this up inside make sure you lock that I say keep that door from banging against this door before you leave the dump station lock and deadbolt lift and turn that handle that's how you want that to travel I say before you leave the dump station because we're gonna have to dump if we are at a, ca a dry camping we're gonna bring up our stabilizing jacks so again now just the opposite Two, three cranks to the left, grab a hold of our hook, lift these up. A couple more cranks and we're done. Go ahead and hook the safety latch back on here. Just in case those release, they got that safety latch. We're dry camping again. We're going to get up underneath here and dump that fresh water tank. If we are at a campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. Again, at the dump station, park accordingly. Your dump is going to be right behind your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. Got 10 foot hose. Hook that up and pull that black holding handle. That's going to be your sewage. When it sounds like that is no longer draining, go inside, check the level of your black tank. Show it's empty, you're darn close to it. Come back out here. Leave that handle open. Grab the hose. We'll come over to campsite. Dump our fresh water, or our low point drains there. Put away our camping stuff. Before we left campsite, of course. When that gray is done, we close that gray, take that sewage hose, and conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in your bumper and head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this J-Flight for many years to come. Happy camping.